They say he's not coming back And nothing can fill the void But at least we can try With food, I'll make some apple pie Come on in, it's Dead Dad's Kitchen Hi everybody, welcome back to Dead Dad's Kitchen Thank you guys so much for joining What are we gonna make today? Oh, well, what's in the title? I had a very storied past with blueberry muffins I've probably tried a hundred different recipes I've tried to come up with a bunch of my own different ones They're sort of tricky to get right And more importantly, it's very tricky to get them to be like Box blueberry muffins I think it's so funny It's so much of my baking inspiration is from like a dollar box of something. But there's just something so special about that to me. And I know that a lot of you guys feel that way too. It's just like a very, very nostalgic feeling. And that's what I think baking is supposed to do. I think it's supposed to make you feel taken care of and safe and happy. And usually those feelings are, were much more abundant when we were all kids. <laughs> Having somebody bake muffins for us. We're going to bake muffins for ourselves today or for somebody you love. This is such a great way to show somebody, hi, I was thinking about you and I spent four hours on you. Now here's the gag, I'm sweaty as hell. Blueberry muffins are so delicious. No one's mad at a muffin. I think it's especially appropriate to be baking blueberry muffins in the summer because there are all of these really beautiful summer berries that are in season. It's kind of hard to go to a grocery store and not see berries on sale right now. But in terms of what you will need for our little baking adventure, in no particular order, some room temperature butter, unsalted white sugar, brown sugar, sour cream, or yogurt. You could do yogurt too. Buttermilk, some eggies, baking powder, baking soda, all-purpose flour, and of course, some fresh berries, blueberries in this case. I have actually already washed these and destemmed them. A lot of them have these little, these little stems, and they're just, they're not gonna kill you, but why not take them off if you can't? They're not like particularly delicious. <laughs> and some cinnamon if you decide to do the streusel topping that I will show you guys. Okay, so I have my little recipe in here. This little book I got years ago. Keep in mind, this is only like a moleskin notebook that's like this big. I got this years ago because there's this guy that I was seeing who like sketched, which, you know, I'm sure he did on purpose. <laughs> But I was like, oh my God, I also need a cool notebook to like write my recipes in. <laughs> and like it's five years later and I'm, I filled up four pages. Anyway, we're going to start this recipe like we would start a lot of baking recipes. We are going to get our dry ingredients together in a bowl. We need two cups of flour. Sorry, let me just write something down real quick. You need two cups of this and put that into a large mixing bowl. I'm getting down to the dregs here. Whoop. Now we're also, I'm, I told you about that streusel. Let's get that together too, just so it's out of the way. In a medium mixing bowl, I never measure this out and I probably should. About a half a cup of flour. We're gonna do an eighth of a cup of granulated sugar, half a cup of brown sugar. I actually like to use some cold butter just so it's easier to maneuver. And this isn't like freezing cold. This was just in my fridge. Never forget your salt. So we use like half a stick of butter, which is a quarter cup, we'll use Pinch of salt. I got some, where's my cinnamon? Here she is. So here's what we're working with. Fuck. Cute. And then we're just gonna get in there with our hands and make sure that all of this butter is coated first. Then just start squishing the butter with the flour and the sugar. And I'm like, getting in there, bud. Don't be afraid. And if you want, we could add some oats in there. We could add some nuts in there. We've got some different sized little chunks. I'm gonna keep this in the fridge. So we didn't forget about our flour. We're going to add our baking soda, baking powder, and salt. These are my favorite things in the world, my little yellow measuring spoons. My mom got them on sale at Williams-Sonoma like eight years ago. And I, I know, brag. We need a tisp and a hoof of baking powder and one teaspoon of baking soda. We're gonna do a teaspoon of salt. Now give this a whisk, you guys know the drill. We aerate this so that it's all incorporated. There we go. <laughs> and some vegetable oil, sorry I forgot. Oh, everybody stop. Make sure that you already have your muffin tin prepped. 
You don't have to do this with liners. You can just grease your muffin tin if you'd prefer, if you don't want these. But again, since I'm giving them to people, it's usually easier to have something you can hold on to that's not like directly the actual muffin itself. But if I were making these like for breakfast somewhere, I would for sure not put liners in. So you don't have to. If you choose not to, make sure you just grease with butter and put a little bit of flour and dust that around. So it comes out nice and easy. Okay, so I am grabbing my stand mixer. If you have a handheld mixer, that is great. And if you're doing this by hand, that's awesome too. It'll just take a bit longer. We're going to take our softened butter and our haunted spatula, which isn't even haunted anymore. And just plop that in there. Here's a tip. If you want to save these, you can to like grease a cookie sheet or do something of that nature. My mom gets mad at me every time I throw them out. So, sorry. I'm going to add my half of a cup of granulated sugar and just let that whip, 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 whip. Then we're gonna do a quarter of a cup of brown sugar. I love when brown sugar falls out of its little container and it holds its shape for a second and then it like <laughs> disintegrates. So now that the butter and sugar are creaming together, I'm going to add just two little baby tablespoons of vegetable oil. To me, the fat in the butter isn't enough to keep it super moist post bake. Um, so I like to add a tablespoon or two of vegetable oil to kind of keep that going. And just stream this in real slow so it doesn't break anything up. And two. Okay, so you can see it's already getting really nice and light and fluffy. I'm gonna turn this down to the lowest setting because now we're gonna add our eggs. Oh, I forgot, you're also gonna need vanilla. I'm sorry I'm not perfect. Giada De Laurenta. We add our eggs slowly just because um, if we put a bunch of eggs in at once, it would, you know, you're familiar. Crack on a flat surface, plop her in there. What's the next thing I'm gonna say? Leave in the comments. Pause it right now, leave it in the comments. Scrape down your bowl. Thank you. Now we're ready to add in our next egg. Boop. Now let's talk about our sour cream. Sour cream is really special because I think what's amazing about muffins is you can kind of eat a couple of them because they're not too sweet. Not too sweet. Okay, right after I called you special, thanks so much. <laughs> I am using a lot of Organic Valley ingredients today just because honestly, I love them. I'm not sponsored, I wish I was. They've sent me a couple wonderful little packages. I just think that they're a really cool company and a really great brand. And so when I, whenever I see them, I try to get them. Our eggs have been mixing. We're gonna scrape down one more time. We need a half of a cup of sour cream. The thing I was saying about the sour cream before it accosted me. We use sour cream because it has a bunch of fat in it. So it keeps our muffins nice and moist. And it also has some tanginess to it. So it sort of offsets a lot of the sugar that's in these muffins. Not that there's too much in there anyway, but why not create some balance where you can? I'm really bad at measuring my vanilla. I never do it. We'll do a teaspoon of vanilla. Oh no, let's do two teaspoons of vanilla. Okay, now we're ready for our dry ingredients and our buttermilk. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is stop the mixer for just a second. Now I'm gonna take a little under half of my dry ingredients. That's what these are called. And then I'm just gonna kind of pulse this together. Now I'm gonna pour in my room temperature buttermilk. We like to keep all of our baking ingredients at room temperature because that way, like super cold milk isn't going to sort of harden up that butter that we let sit out for so long. We just kind of want everything to be the same temperature so it all, can all kind of incorporate the same. We have a quarter flirt cup of buttermilk. Let's account for some splashing and spilling. I'm just gonna leave the tiniest bit of dry ingredient and I'm gonna show you a fun trick in a second. Now you're saying, Irene, oh my God, you're so innovative. What is the reason you kept those dry, the little bit of dry ingredient out? I'm so happy you asked, Jennifer. Here's what we're doing. Scrape down everything, right? Bingo, bingo. So we've got our little bit of dry ingredient, right? We have our fresh washed blueberries. We're gonna pour those in there and we're gonna toss this. And the reason we toss this is because look at this. Oh my God, I love this trick so much. I do not remember where I learned it, but I learned it. Now we have all these perfectly coated blueberries that have all of the dry ingredients in. Instead of sinking to the bottom of your muffin, they're going to stay suspended because there's something on the outside that's sort of like grabbing on to the rest of the muffin. Very cool. Now I'm going to put these covered blueberries into this glass bowl, right? Now we are going to fold these in nice and gently. 
And by fold, we just mean sort of scoop from the bottom and go over the top so that they are evenly incorporated. We're obviously trying not to break any of them. Now, we've got some blueberry muffin batter. Look at that. Cute, cute, cute. Then we're ready to scoop our muffins. Oh, by the way, have your oven preheating to 425 degrees. I know it seems high, that's another trick. I'm very excited to show you. To scoop your muffins, get a nice big ice cream scoop. We covered our muffins in our streusel. We had just enough for a couple extra in this one. So this made what, 12? 19 muffins. Now we wanna fill these up really, really high. And here's why. I love like big ass bakery top muffins. I think those are so fun and pretty and like the best way to eat a muffin. That's one of the tricks is fill your muffins up all the way. A lot of recipes will say like three quarters of the way. What's gonna get those nice high tops, filling it up all the way. Now another trick, so many tricks in this episode. It's because I've made so many blueberry muffins that have turned out like ass. I'm taking some turbinado sugar. It's just this very coarse sugar. And instead of doing streusel on all of them, I'm gonna do some sugar on some, just in case somebody doesn't like streusel, which I don't imagine happening, but it could. So now back to that super high oven. The reason it is super high is so that when we initially put these muffins in, they get like smacked in the face with heat. And that's also gonna help create a lot of initial rise so we get nice big muffins. After five minutes in a 425 degree oven, we're gonna bring it down to 375 degrees for an additional like 20-ish minutes, making sure to rotate halfway through. slight mishap. Sometimes when you're pulling stuff from ovens and putting stuff in ovens, it can get, have little, it can like, like this one, got a little chunk out of it and it went onto the side. So that's just a muffin chip. And it's delicious. These are still super, super warm, but you saw how absolutely gorgeous they are. They got so much stunning color on them. They got nice and big and puffy and crunchy. And I'm going to let them sit in these hot muffin tins on a cooling rack just for like 10 minutes, then I'm going to take them out and put them directly on the cooling rack, and then we'll get to try them. Ask nicely and I'll show you. This is one of the ones I accidentally hit on the corner of the oven, so I'll eat this ugly one, but I wanna show you just how beautiful. Okay, we have this beautiful muffin. Dude, that's so fucking good. I'm not even talking that much because they're so good. I've added a stick of butter, a little mini stick. I will tell you what, there's not much. Oh my God, look how pretty. I'm sorry, hold on. Just go make these. They're so good. <laughs> you can definitely use frozen blueberries if that's what you've got going on. I just use fresh because they were on sale and they're in season. And you'd be crazy not to make these. They're delicious. They're pretty easy, kind of a lot of ingredients, but one of those things that comes together pretty quickly. And it's such a nice gift to give to somebody. It's such a nice way to say, hi, I've been thinking about you. They're super yummy, and now you've got a perfect recipe. Go make them. Also, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. That would be super rad. I would really appreciate it, and I hope you make these. If you do, send me pictures at Homemade by Irene on Instagram. Bye-bye.